Jimmy Butler has been the piece that pushed the Miami Heat into playoff contention. He has evolved over the years as a defensive-minded guy to a great two-way player in the league. He has taken strides to improve his offensive game and continue to make winning plays to help his team be consistent winners. Jimmy gets a bad rap for how he is as a player, but that's just him expecting to get the best out of people consistently. Some people can take it being held accountable, some can't. The culture in Miami best suited him and that has shown a lot this season with his connection with his teammates. Before I start this video, if you do like the video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel and I do more of these player breakdowns on the channel if you are interested. This is a channel meant to spark a conversation and the more people in that conversation, the better. With all that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Jimmy Butler is the ideal two-way player in the league right now, a guy who can give you great offense and great defense and also prioritizes having his teammates do well. Jimmy is much more of a team player than he is probably given credit for. He isn't flashy as a player by any means, but he does what is necessary to win games. If he needs to take a back seat and let other guys shine, he is completely fine in doing so. If he needs to step up and potentially close out a game, he will do so. He is just a winning player and his winning style of basketball is helping this Miami Heat team. Jimmy Butler this season with the Miami Heat is averaging around 20 points, 6.7 rebounds, and 6 assists on 45% field goal shooting, 24% from 3, and 83% from the free throw line. His true shooting percentage on the season is at 58%. Butler's strength as an offensive player is his driving and finishing ability. He is a strong player and that allows him to take and absorb contact when getting to the rim. He works very well as an isolation guy working in isolation situations. He doesn't have all too much crafty moves, he isn't going to cross you up, dribble moves, or is very explosive. He is good at taking what the defense gives him and working off of that. He mostly does straight line drives to the rim and at times he is able to use a spin move to get by his opponents and score. Very capable of finishing with either hand. He has been very efficient finishing at the rim. This season in the restricted area, he is shooting it at 63% and in the paint area, he shoots it at 42%. Some of his drives are just flat out tough, extremely difficult, but he finds a way to finish it. And on top of that, he gets an and one call at times. A lot of his drives also comes in transition, which he is very good at running the break and converting in transition. Most of his dunks this season has come just from running the break. While attempting a layup this season, Jimmy has shot it at 53%. Jimmy is also good as an off-ball player. He doesn't always need the ball in his hands to be effective. He is good at cutting to the rim, coming off screens, and going strong to the rim or just trying to help open up a shot for his teammate by screening for them. He doesn't always need a screen to cut to the rim, very capable of just doing this on his own, blowing by his defender and finishing at the rim. One of the most underrated things about Jimmy's game this season is his ability to draw fouls. He has done an excellent job and has taken leaps and bounds this season in baiting players to foul him. Since he is much more of a slasher, it's good that he's getting these types of calls as the elite players of the game know how to draw fouls. This season, he goes to the line around 9 times a game, and since he is at 83% from the free throw line, he converts a good amount of these. Jimmy's ability to get to the line has dropped off since his last season in Chicago, where he was getting to the line around 9 a game. Ever since then, he has gotten there around 6 a game. Now his free throw attempts have picked back up to 9 a game this season with the Miami Heat, this may have been due to him having to share the ball a lot next to ball handlers in Minnesota and Philly. He is also really good at working in the post, where he knows how to utilize his abilities down there. Since he is very good working down there, he can go to a fadeaway shot or drive, then pull up for a shot or just take it in strong and finish over a player. He draws a lot of attention down there, which opens up a lot of potential 3 point shots and cutters. He finds his teammates and hits them right on the money. 
this then leads into his playmaking ability and Butler has grown as a playmaker in the league. It helps a lot also when you have players like Bam Adebayo, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Harrow and other three point shooters to kick out to and Butler has taken full advantage of this. He's averaging a career high in assists at six a game and he is very good at working in the pick and roll finding cutters, finding shooters. With how Miami's offense is designed, it has helped Butler make a lot of easy reads. The spacing around Butler makes it very easy to drive and kick, find shooters, and the shooters on this team is incredibly confident and they are not afraid to launch it quickly and make it. With how Butler is able to create shots for himself, his teammates also benefit a lot from that. He is an elite as a passer to the degree of LeBron, Luka, Trey, Chris Paul, but Butler is very aware of what is happening on the court and who may potentially be open and he is good at getting it to these players on time to the best of his ability. He also isn't high in turnovers, averages around 2.2 turnovers a game. He has had times where he made questionable passes or try to force in a pass, but overall he doesn't make too many head scratching plays and lets the game come to him. Even with his limited ball handling ability, he is still great at managing the ball and not losing it or having it stripped away. Now, Butler as a shooter is extremely concerning. He has been very very bad from here and honestly if he was an average three-point shooter he would be around the 25 points per game mark his three-point shooting has took a step back 24 percent on low volume shooting is extremely concerning butler only takes two threes a game throughout his career he has always been a low volume three-point shooter but he has always been around 30 percent or more in his career his highest shooting was 38% in his second year in Chicago. He has been up and down as a shooter and really hasn't taken strides to take more or hit them down consistently. This may be a confidence issue with his three point shot as well as a mechanical issue in his shot that has just never been figured out. The really great scores of today's games has valued the three point shot and some has medium volume attempting five to six or others having high volume shooting eight to 11 threes. Jimmy has attempted 119 threes on the season. In catch and shoot situations, he is shooting it at 29% and in pull-up situations, he shoots it at 20%, both on extremely low value. He isn't good at creating three-point shots for himself, and he basically has to be wide open to knock down a three consistently. He takes most of his threes above the break and occasionally in the corners, but again, low volume and shoots it in the 20s from there. He is much more comfortable taking shots in the mid-range as he attempted 167 on the season, but he only converted 53 of them, shooting it at 31% on the season. Again, this is head scratching because in the past he was a respectable mid-range shooter. Jimmy's shooting is something that is holding him back from being a first option on a championship team. If he is able to shoot it and create consistently for a mid-range shot or three consistently, he would easily be a threat to average 25 points or more a game. Jimmy's defense has no doubt been his biggest strength in the league. Easily a top on-ball defender capable of guarding and locking up the stars in the league and has impeccable foot speed and lateral movement that helps him keep up with the offensive player. Butler is very physical with you and mixed out with some of his defensive techniques and that creates a lot of problems for the offensive player. He is capable of guarding majority of players, mostly the one through four at a high level. He doesn't bite on fakes or get lost on defense. He is great at just playing his man straight up and not giving up anything. He takes a lot of pride on this end and he lets it be known when he makes a defensive play. He has the ability to disrupt plays, come out of nowhere for a steal as he averages around 1.8 steals a game. What's really remarkable about his defense is that he doesn't have that long of a wingspan, and yet he is able to effectively strip players and play the passing lanes at a high level. He makes a lot of players uncomfortable and Jimmy is more than capable of locking you down. 
His defensive IQ is amazing. He reads plays well and knows and times when he can step in and get a steal. He has shown his defensive instincts and IQ a lot this season and it has helped boost this Miami Heat's team defense as a whole. His timing is what impresses me the most about his defense. A lot of times players gamble, get out of position, and just miss times when to go in for a steal. Jimmy knows the right time to go in for a steal and he does this consistently making him a huge threat when going against him. His on ball and off ball defense are both elites and he is one of the best at his position. Jimmy Butler is a winning player. He brings intensity and grit to every team he has played for and makes winning plays. Plus, he is a pretty damn good closer. Jimmy is a leader and his leadership on this Miami Heat team has helped push them be threats in the East this year and for many years to come.